there's a comedian who uh, jokes about how we used to like to have guests over in the sense of if somebody rang the doorbell all oh, the kids would get excited and I mean I remember running to the door in my socks and sliding in and swinging the door open and being like hey who are you welcome to our house nowadays the doorbell goes off and you're like Right? Is the, did you order something from Amazon? Don't, don't move. You know, uh, we, we just don't uh, have guests like we used to. We used to call it having company over. Oh, we got company. We got company. Uh, now it's uh, terrifying to think who might be at the door. Uh, the Holy Spirit today is described among many ways in our sequence as the soul's most welcome guest. But I, 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 uh, as much as we all love the Lord, I think uh, we often don't welcome the Holy Spirit in our lives. When you have a guest over, it affects your day. You have to adjust your plans. You have to put everything on pause to be kind and generous. Maybe you'll pull out some food for them or whatever. Uh, which is part of why we don't have guests over. We don't welcome company like we used to because we're a lot busier than we used to be. So it's uh, no wonder that we actually, if we're honest, I, don't, I think very often we don't welcome the Holy Spirit in our lives. Uh, I, I think of, for myself, when I was first convicted that the Lord wanted me to consider priesthood, um, I was about 15. And because I was about 15, two weeks later, I decided to start dating a girl. And I went... And I pursued my own career, and I started to um, dream about being a civil engineer, and that's what I started to head towards. And I really stopped listening to the Lord, stopped making time for the Holy Spirit. I wasn't asking for the Holy Spirit's guidance, really. I had a good plan, good Catholic girlfriend, good plans. I had it. I was fine. I had it all under my control, and I was happy. And then there came a point when uh, I told myself, if I'm called to get married... Because I still thought, I mean, I was still Catholic. I still practiced my faith. So I still wanted to do God's will. <laughs> but I remember one day I told myself, if I'm supposed to get married, she's the one. And as soon as I said those words, I felt an emptiness. It was very strange to me. I didn't know what to make of that at first. Eventually in time, because I'm very slow, I, I just noticed that, um, that emptiness is the lack of meaning. The Holy Spirit is our most welcome guest because He gives us meaning. Fish were made to swim, birds were made to fly, human beings were made to glorify God, to do His will. That's what makes us happy. Without that, there's something missing. There's our, our ultimate purpose and meaning in life is absent, is not present. Uh, how is the Holy Spirit wanting to enter our lives this week? That's a good question. But again, I want to emphasize why. Why even bother worrying about the Holy Spirit? We're made for more. We're made for mission. We know that innately. We have a group of men here at the parish called the Porters of St. Joseph. They uh, help with security in the, in the church. We have ambassadors who help welcome people, make sure everyone's comfortable, have seats, etc. Kind of logistics inside the church. But the porters of St. Joseph help with the security outside, and they're trained by police of the city of Phoenix. They receive special training for how to deal with certain emergencies and how to prevent certain bad things from happening. And we have a group of men who have just stepped up, who just uh, heard the call from Father Lenke, which I was about to jump up and get, get, join the group, because uh, it's just exciting to think of um, some of us are indifferent to this. But the, the question is, do the men of this parish have a desire to serve with a servant's heart, like Christ has a servant's heart who pours himself out for us? Do the, do the men of our parish have the willingness to stand up when there's danger? Do the men of our parish have a willingness to put themselves at risk for the, for the sake of others? Do the men of our parish have the willingness to set aside time and give extra 
so that our community can be more at rest and present to the Lord at Mass. We need men to stand up. And here's what I found, is that first of all, there's a, a large group of men who, who rose to the occasion right away. But here's the other thing is, um, you know, of all the men's groups that there can be, which there are many great ones, this one, um, like a lot of them, when men stand up, they, they're thinking, I'm, I'm going to be generous to the church. I've seen this with Knights of Columbus. I, I've seen this with, with other youth group leaders. I've seen this with all kinds of groups of men who stand up to do something good for the church to give of themselves. And every time, what they discover in giving, they feel that they're receiving so much more. It's how the Holy Spirit works. He, he, the Holy Spirit enters in when there's community. Remember the apostles and the disciples were gathered in a room together, united in prayer. They had just selected Matthias. And the, and the Acts of the Apostles is describing that. It's not just the 12 apostles. There's also some women, Mary among them. And then there's over 120 disciples. And then the next few verses says, describes how the Holy Spirit came down upon them. So the Holy Spirit loves to work when there's unity, when people band together for a purpose, a common goal. That's why the Holy Spirit works so much in our community of faith here, as we gather for the sacred liturgy. We're kind of taken out of our comfort zone, to some extent, because we all have our different ways of praying, but in the Mass, we're praying one way. Some of us are more charismatic, some of us are more introverted, but everyone's challenged when you're forced to come together sit in uncomfortable chairs, and be quiet. <laughs> it's uncomfortable, it's difficult, but there's something about that that the Holy Spirit loves to work with. Part of it is the submission of our will. I know, we all know this instinctively, that if God is God, then He has a will, He's personal, He has a desires, and I, His desires are more important than mine. If God is more important than I am, then His desires are more important than mine, and what He's doing is more important than what I'm doing. And so we sit, and we kneel, and we stand, and we approach the Lord in the Eucharist. Because He's doing something for us, and it requires that we submit to that. Remember that very uncomfortable passage from St. Paul? He says that, wives, you must be submissive to your husbands. Right, very uncomfortable. But what does it mean to submit? If we're thinking about it as some sort of slave thing, that's way off base. But sub means under in Latin, and missio, mission, well, it's to be under the husband's mission, to be of one mission. And it, what, is it, what does St. Paul say to husbands? He says, husbands loves your wives as Jesus loved his church and gave himself up for her. That's the mission of the husband, is to be under Christ. It's only then that every, everything starts to line up if we're about God first. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's important for us to make time for the Holy Spirit to make room. Uh, and we must take this challenge of this week to give Him space. You know, that's exactly how breathing works. Uh, there's 14.6 pounds of atmospheric pressure at sea level, pressing upon us always. And so to breathe, you don't have to, there's no fan sucking in air. Your diaphragm is the muscle that when it contracts, it lowers. It's right underneath your lungs. So when it contracts, it lowers, and now there's space for the lungs to expand. And as soon as there's space, the air rushes in. And in fact, to breathe out, to get the air out of your lungs, you have to let the diaphragm relax. It's just like our spiritual life. When we relax, there's no room for the Holy Spirit. We have to engage. And when I was in seminary learning how to sing in choir, we did so many breathing exercises, it was ridiculous. And I found more and more as we, we, we learned to stretch, we actually have to learn to stretch certain muscles that you never use in your core to the point that you can start to breathe more and more because this muscle, it contracts to make space. And so if you really want to make a lot of space, you've got to really contract. And then you also have to let other, like your lower back, it's crazy. It, I could go, it, it's, it's just, let's just say that you have a capacity to breathe much greater than you realize.
Most of us don't uh, keep our resolutions to exercise more. And one of the number one reasons that's the case is because obligation, cold obligation, it's what I should do, doesn't motivate for very long. Because even the laws of the church, which are many, and the obligations of the church, which are difficult, are not cold obligations. They're for our freedom. And if we don't understand that the freedom is Jesus in relationship with Him for all eternity, obligation isn't going to cut it, which is why so many young people have left the church. Because there's been many heresies within the body of the church, preached from the pulpit and said amongst the faithful, that is cold moralism. Cold moralism is where you just, it's just about doing the right things. Where's God there? We do the right things to enter into a greater relationship with God, to receive His Spirit, to become one body, one spirit in Christ. And now we're under His mission. We're living His life. Life isn't about doing just the good things, it's about doing God's will for us, which is unique for every individual. And we need men in this parish to do God's will. We need women who are bold and not just pursuing their own pursuits, but listening for God's desires for them. God has beautiful, more glorious desires than we could ever imagine. I, um, when I joined seminary, I, I had to break up with my girlfriend, I had to drop my university enrollment, and I had no idea what was going to happen. But I felt so much peace. I remember even my sister, like one day as I was like getting ready to pack my stuff to go to seminary, she's just like kind of doing her hair in the bathroom and she looks over at me and she says, are you really going to do this? And I, she later shared with me like she really was seriously skeptical. You, Fernando? But what she describes to me is that when she saw me come back each year, she saw the peace and joy increase. And I don't know, it's hard for me to describe what happened. Other than what was missing was no longer missing. Every year of seminary got harder, life got harder. But one of my greatest inspirations was watching my sister's marriages. I saw that when my sisters got married, their lives got harder. Now they had to cancel certain plans with friends to make time for their husband. Then the kids came along and they had to give up everything else. <laughs> and they had, as life got harder and harder, I saw their joy increase. They were filled with meaning. That's what the Holy Spirit has the capacity to give us, but not just an earthly meaning, an eternal meaning, a meaning that transcends the good and the bad of this world, because our hope is in heaven. So as we, as we listen attentively to how is the Holy Spirit calling us this week to give our lives meaning, which that motivates for an ex for forever, really, just keep in mind that he, the Holy Spirit is not only the most welcome guest, but He can become our, our life's mission.